Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the regular meeting of Asilius Town Council, Monday, September 17th at 2 o'clock p.m. in Council Chambers. Uh, we're looking on the first item of business. We're looking to uh, adopt some minutes, uh, Committee of the Whole minutes from September the 4th, 2012, and regular open minutes from September the 4th, 2012. Any input from Council? Hearing none, they will be adopted by consensus. Uh, business arising from some prior minutes, and this covers the release of resolutions from special closed meeting held on September the 13th. Uh, there was two items that were brought forward from the in-camera closed meeting to the public meeting today. Motion in camera 270 slash 12, moved by Councillor Rhodes, seconded by Councillor Ryan, and resolved that Council approves option two to construct the public pathway to a lesser standard to a total approximately co co approximate cost of 74,600 with consideration to reduce the grade of the slope. This would involve the development of uh, that sort of sandwich between Nighthawk Drive and 89th. Uh, it was a new development that had been stalled in one of the uh, turndowns. And what has happened is we moved the, there was a, a walkway that was going to align um, the 89th Street, which is down in, uh, across from the school, and the pathway would go up Nighthawk because we have a lot of traffic going from that area up to the arena, up to the Sun Bowl Arena. So we had asked for the developer to provide this sliver of land to allow the walkway. He has come back and uh, started to do a redevelopment on that property, and at, at that time, uh, the, the south slope, uh, the south side did not work for him, so he requested that we move it to the north side, and we are doing that and proceeding with that, and are prepared to, whether the development goes ahead or not, it will not hinge on that. The town is going to go ahead, uh, procure that, that, that easement of land, and provide that, that sidewalk. So now that we can get all of our students uh, that access um, going up to the Sun Bowl Arena, they'll go back and forth. And there's other people on Nighthawk that will probably use that walking path too. So that's what that uh, motion was all about. And the second motion that's coming forward was motion in camera 271 slash, tw slash 12, moved by Councillor Rhodes and seconded by Councillor Ryan, resolved that staff is directed to include the provisions of the servicing agreement to state that the town is agreeable to a $30,000 offset in parkland development cost charges and retains the right to purchase for the amount of $30,000. Which means that there's, if it goes ahead, if the, if the development goes ahead, uh, the, the, uh, the walkway will take place. If the walkway doesn't go ahead uh, and is still further stalled or bogged down with the economic climate, we will purchase the land to continue with that same said walkway connecting 89th Street to Nighthawk Drive. So those are just brought forward into the, into the uh, public realm. Thank you. Uh, looking for introduction of late items. Was there any late items onto the agenda? I, I have a late item I'd like to introduce. Um, it would be under the correspondence, and um, it, it, has, it has to do with, with our UBCM and the conflict for the third and fourth year in a row uh, when they have their IJC meeting. Uh, they come once a year for the IJC meeting, and I believe the last three years it's been when council has been all the way at the UBCM, and I'm going to request a letter be sent that, that they see if there's a possibility that they can move, move that date because uh, I really think that council should be there at the International Joint Commission hearing. So, so that will be the gist of it when, when we get there. Um, and I'll just bring that up at the, at the end of the correspondence there. So that will be uh, G4. Uh, so uh, with, with that late item, I will need a resolution to adopt the agenda, roads, plant, all in favor, uh, it, uh, adopted as, as amended, and that would bring us to uh, item E, delegations, and it uh, looks like we're going to have our quarterly update report, a CSRCMP detachment report from Sergeant Kevin Schur. Sergeant Schur, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Um, I'll just go over the uh, 
the second quarter uh, statistics that we have for policing and assault use. And then I'll just talk about um, so a new development in uh, assault use detachment in uh, South Okanagan Sinokamine Detachment. Um, for the second quarter um, of this year, uh, our overall crime statistics in the Soyuz, uh, we saw a 20% increase in overall statistics, policing statistics. Uh, that's in com just to give comparison, uh, Oliver had an 11% increase uh, in the same time frame. Penticton had uh, approximately 1%. Kermius uh, decreased by 7%. Princeton decreased by 12% and Summerland decreased by 10%. So when you first look at that, you might think, what's going on? <laughs> Things are out of control, but actually it's the other way. Uh, due to a number of initiatives that we did here, uh, the enhanced enforcement nights uh, that we've conducted, the municipal overtime uh, that council approved for us for uh, uh, mostly in, in uh, August, uh, as well as using all of our uh, seasonal policing overtime that we were given, um, basically, the increase is due in large part to it's all self-generated stuff. It's all policemen out there on the street, on the beaches, uh, addressing problems before they're even called in. So this isn't in response policing. This is, you know, preempting uh, issues, uh, addressing people uh, on the beach that are drinking or causing problems, things like that. So that's why there's such a huge increase, which is a good thing. Um, I'll just go over some of the more pertinent uh, statistics. In this quarter, we had uh, one business break and enter reported, uh, which is down from uh, last year. We did have an increase in thefts from vehicles, uh, quite a number, uh, quite a large increase actually. And that was due in part, we had two groups sort of working in the area during the summer, uh, doing thefts from vehicles. One of them is a local group uh, with local sort of teens. Uh, that group is still sort of out and about doing that. Uh, the other group we identified, it was a number of people from Ontario that were here, uh, Ontario and Nova Scotia. Uh, we found, we located them, we arrested them, and uh, they're actually not allowed to be in the Soyuz any longer. So, and they'll be facing charges for that. And that put an end to that particular group. Um, of interest, we, uh, we didn't have any sex assault um, investigations over the summer which is quite amazing because usually there's quite a number of them with the number of uh, tourists we get in town uh, transient workers and, and just the volume of people we have here uh, usually we we have we see a, a huge increase in those types of investigations uh, which is unfortunate but but that's just reality and this year we had none uh, which is quite quite amazing uh, you know, I'd like to think that some of that would be the police presence out there, that when you have police kind of all around and on the beaches and whatnot, uh, that, that perhaps that curtails some of that. For drug enforcement, over this quarter, there was uh, 10 drug investigations um, that we had. Uh, we had a large number of impaired driving initiatives going on, mm -hmm. and a large number of people were pulled over for impaired driving. There was four 24-hour prohibitions issued, there was three uh, three-day roadside prohibitions, five 90-day roadside prohibitions, and seven people were charged with impaired driving over that three-month period. Uh, those are those are great statistics um, for policing. Um, the large number of those people that were involved in that were were visitors to Soyuz, okay. uh, not locals. So you know people are coming to town and unfortunately drinking too much and driving, and they're they're not going to have a good time if they do that here so that's another another good thing uh, on june 8th we uh, did a enhanced enforcement night uh, locally and we partnered up with american law enforcement u.s border patrol uh, cbsa at the port immigration our traffic services uh, the liquor inspector basically we had uh, about 17 police officers uh, or related uh, enforcement agencies out in the Soyuz specifically uh, targeting pretty much everything um, and that particular night it was actually a fairly slow night um, but there, we did have some some notable files and uh, on the liquor enforcement side um, with the area bars uh, we had some some great success that night which also assisted us for the summer because basically with the liquor establishments because of that extra work we did in June, it kind of, kind of set the bar for how the uh, the standard we we're going to hold throughout the summer, 
and the bars basically kept to that and we didn't have that many problems this summer in the bars so so that worked out very well uh, marine safety uh, thanks in large part to the town giving us the berth at the, the new marina uh, we were able to respond with our boat 24 hours a day uh, seven days a week uh, we responded over the the quarter to three boat emergencies people in distress uh, that we were able to go and help them out uh, we recovered a stolen boat with it uh, as well as doing our, our normal marine patrols uh, we'd like to do more of those marine patrols it's just a resourcing thing uh, we have to have two members in the boat all the time uh, for safety reasons so it's it's a bit difficult for us to do that uh, but we are hoping to come up with some new uh, new initiatives next year um, to increase our, our marine presence even more uh, we also have the uh, the team from Kelowna that comes down in fact they were just here uh, about a week ago and uh, they had a large presence on the lake I think they they had about 18 contacts in that one day so which is very good uh, Sergeant sure can you do that with auxiliaries or is that full members yes. no we can do it with auxiliaries okay. for sure and actually uh, with Lila okay. uh, remember at that, the meeting we discussed that so um, for us we can take a bylaw officer if they're working to right. come out to be our second person Okay. They don't have to have knowledge of the operating the boat. We take care of that. Okay. It's just for safety. We have to have that second person. Um, we actually, I, I sent a, uh, a formal request to CBSA to see if they would participate with us, but unfortunately, they're not able to. Okay. Um, with that, though, U.S. Border Patrol is going to be um, starting an initiative uh, next year, and we're going to partner with them to increase the patrolling of the border on the lake and to uh, to be doing a lot of checks there um, they're going to be clamping down on their side quite a bit uh, as far as people crossing period and we'll be doing the same on, on our side and uh, anytime anybody crosses the border um, without reporting they're subject to search uh, for contraband drugs that kind of thing so we'll be doing that for sure uh, where do we we always seem to have this uh, missing information on that lake border crossing can you, my understanding was that you could go over the border and not touch land was allowed. That's Or is that a privilege? True. That's, uh, is that a privilege? Well, it depends which way you're going. Um, right now, the Americans are saying, no, you're, you're not allowed to do that. If you cross, you're not allowed to cross the border, period. Are basically. they? Uh, on our side, you have to report immediately. So if you cross the border, you can't cross the border and drive around and, and tow people around all day and then go back. Okay. You have to report immediately to, to Canada uh, uh, Border Services. Okay. So that is a change. What has happened in the past is if you, you could cross over as long as you didn't meet anybody, put to land, or right. stop, then you were okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that is changing where you must report immediately. And, and people don't do that. Um, so what we're hoping to do in conjunction with U.S. Border Patrol is uh, an education uh, for everybody. So some media information. Uh, getting out there doing some informative talks things like that uh, and then we'll have a, a bit of a period where we just hand out warnings that kind of thing you know just do safety mm -hmm. compliance checks and uh, warnings uh, no tickets or things like that uh, but there will come a time where it will be enforced uh, a lot heavier and basically it, it's like crossing at the port if you if you cross the border you're, you're you kind of lose all your rights because mm -hmm. you're subject if you haven't reported you're subject to uh, <coughs> inspection to make sure that you're not bringing something right. illegally into right. the country, so okay, because yeah. it, 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 you know that, and I'm going to call that sort of the hard, the hard line, mm -hmm. um, and then it was relaxed uh, after that, where you could, you could, you could, uh, no, as long as you didn't touch land, yes. you were fine again to go down and do a little cruise around and come back. So now they're going, now they're going back to the, they've gone back to the hard line, obviously. Then. Yes, they, they have in eastern Canada and um, west of us, actually, Ross Lake uh, mm -hmm. towards Chilliwack. Okay. Uh, that, that's another lake that crosses the border. Right. And it's been used quite extensively for smuggling. Oh, uh, I'm sure. Drugs and, and other things. Uh, so because of that, um, you know, U.S. Border Patrol is, is taking the stance where they're, they're going to enforce it quite a bit. Um, so, and of course with us it fits in because we want more marine and, uh, uh, patrols mm -hmm. and more presence on the water right. for everything, not right. just the border, yeah. for, for drinking and driving sure. And, sure. and the loud stereos and everything. Uh, so it's going to fit well with us, of course it's just a matter of resources, us getting out there. Um, you know, perhaps um, we could use some of the, uh, 
uh, if we have the municipal overtime again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for marine enforcement. Okay. Uh, and then get get our boat out there even more. Okay. Than uh, than this year. That depends on our success in the parks. Yes. Well, we were very successful. Let's <laughs> uh, get good. to that. <laughs> um, for other community uh, engagement, um, I, I would still like to explore starting a community consultative group. Uh, here, the, the one we had previously kind of died out, uh, and I still see a lot of value in that. Um, I've talked to Jeanette about that, and, and we just ran out of time, to okay. be honest. So hopefully this fall, winter, uh, we can get together and uh, try to get some uh, some community partners okay. uh, to do that. Um, our members throughout this quarter uh, conducted a, a large number of uh, red surge duties, uh, whether it's July 1st, uh, hockey games, things like that. Uh, the Citizens and Patrol and Speed Watch is very active. Um, I understand uh, Council gave them a grant, some grant money this year, which was fantastic, because that sure helps them for fuel costs and things like that. Right now, uh, well, over this period, we, we have one prolific um, or chronic offender in town. I think you all know who he is. Uh, he's always around town. Um, we continue to deal with him you know, it's a, it's a struggle, right? Mm -hmm. And I think everybody here knows the, all the issues uh, uh, tied into that, you know. But we're going to continue to try to come up with some different solutions um, for him, uh, to, you know, that, that are the best for everybody to balance his rights as well as, you know, to address the, the public nuisance type right. thing. Uh, Thank you. Uh, for border integrity, we, we have a great working relationship with our border enforcement team here. Uh, with U.S. Border Patrol, Canada Border Services, uh, U.S. Customs, um, and we continue to be working with them on, on different border-related issues that do affect the soil use. It's kind of the darker side, uh, you know, organized crime type stuff, but it is here and, uh, you know, we work with, with them on that. Uh, the recent, uh, you know, Hells Angels uh, searches that we did mm -hmm. north of town, uh, or Hells Angels related, uh, and then the other search warrant that we did on Hewitt Road. Uh, you know, that's all organized crime. That's all drugs coming through a Soyuz. Mm -hmm. So we're well aware of that. And we're actually in a, a fairly good uh, position to address a lot of that, probably yeah. better than a lot of other uh, detachments are, yeah. which is good. Uh, crime Stoppers, over this three-month period, uh, we received five tips from Crime Stoppers, which is which is pretty good. Mm. For some reason, they kind of died out for a number of years, okay. and now they seem to be coming back, which, okay. which is a very good thing. Uh, the members continue to do curfew checks uh, around town for people that are on uh, conditions from the court. Our members volunteer on parent advisory committees, um, coaching hockey. Uh, we started up our school zone patrols again, of course, with school starting. Uh, our D.A.R.E. program will be going again this year. Uh, it was very successful last year. Um, we have school liaison officers in the elementary school and in the Soyuz Secondary School as well. Um, and we're also involved with uh, the Army Cadet Corps in Penticton, uh, which draws, uh, well, and, and the, the Soyuz and all of our Air Cadets as well. Okay. So we're, we're involved in that as well. Um, so that's kind of the snapshot over the last three months of the, the policing and sort of the summer policing. It was a very, very busy summer, um, but really we didn't have any large files, like, uh, you know, quite, you know, in-depth or, or real bad assaults, that kind of stuff, which is really unusual. You know, it's kind of like, again, with the sex, sex assault files, mm -hmm. we just didn't seem to have those, which is a very good thing. And, and again, I'm, uh, the only change we've had was the extra police presence so uh, you know I think there's a correlation there um, the, the are there any questions in regards to those statistics at all I think you know working together I think that really made a difference and okay. we started late yes and I think next year it's going to be a hundred percent better than it was this year and this year was pretty good yeah and we were you know, as council, we were scrambling too from the, I know you were, but so were we from the financial uh, aspect of that. So uh, mm -hmm. I, I certainly will be part of our budget talks this year and, and getting it kicked off early. And if, if, we're, if we're that successful early, you know, we can wrap it up a lot earlier too, because once, once we set the attitude uh, uh, and set the program for the summer, 
um, I, I think the rest of it just falls into place, really. Yeah, I have to. I have to agree. It's like the bars. You know, mm -hmm. in, in June, beginning of June, we we touched the bars up right. basically, uh, with you know, in partnership with the liquor inspectors, and we had no problems through the I, summer early. Great. So it makes a big difference. You put that effort in the beginning, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, then we we have a good summer. Set the tone. Draw the line. Yeah, absolutely. You bet. Um, the other item I, I wanted to, to talk about was um, a couple weeks ago, um, we had a meeting, there's myself, um, Sergeant Harrington, Inspector Hogley, and Staff Sergeant Lazinski. And uh, at that meeting, it was decided that for, for a better fit for the regional um, detachment model, uh, the decision's been made that we're going to uh, go back to standalone detachments for Oliver and Soyuz. Um, so instead of the combined detachment, we'll be separate again, just like it was before we started combining <laughs> <laughs> 10 years ago. So the, uh, everything that's old is new again. Um, basically, some, some rough dates are December 1st. Uh, we're hoping that our, our shift schedules will be split. So then the Soyuz members will only work in the Soyuz and, and area. Uh, and the same with Oliver. And we're hoping that we'll be able to split our information systems, our electronic file systems, by January 1st, mm -hmm. approximately. Mm -hmm. That's really out of our hands. Um, the reasoning for this is that, of course, we're part of the regional model, which includes Princeton, Carameas, Summerland, uh, us, Oliver, and Penticton. Um, everybody sort of feeds into that model uh, individually except Oliver and Soyuz. So it was an integration in an integration. Mm -hmm. And so we had different systems in place from everybody else. And to be honest, it's a bit more complicated uh, the way we have to do things and maybe not as efficient. Uh, so by simplifying things and going back to a standalone detachment, um, we'll be able to simplify, simplify those systems. Um, and the, the biggest benefit I think that the town and the community will see is that when the members are only working here, when it's a slow time, we're going to have that free time that the members have. We're not going to be sending them to work in Oliver or wherever the work is. We're going to have that free time where we can do community uh, policing. So we can get out there, we can, you know what, go for a walk downtown, talk to people, do the beach walks, that kind of stuff, but more the community-based policing. Uh, things that, to be honest, we just haven't had time to do because there's always something going on. Yes. Between Oliver and Asoyus, there's something going on, and we would just send the members wherever right. it was going. So the members here haven't really had time to do that, that unfettered time to do the community policing. So we're hoping that going back and simplifying, they'll have that. Now, that being said, come summer in Asoyus, it is extremely busy, and the members here are going to be extremely busy because right. it's only going to be that. So, but outside of that, you know, there should be more time for the community-based policing things. And we would get, as, a, as a, a resort municipality, we would get that recognition in dollars through your budget too, somewhat? What we get here, uh, and we had it this year as well, because we already split those, those funds for this year. So uh, this particular, well, this last summer, we had uh, approximately $4,000 just for July 1st okay and that was to bring extra policemen and wow. it didn't matter if they were from there right. they were from Oliver and right. Soyuz here but it doesn't matter where they're from so we will I would anticipate we would still get that so that that takes care of July 1st we also get uh, this last year we had five thousand dollars in summer policing okay. seasonal policing money uh, which we spent all of it right uh, and I anticipate we would get that as well okay uh, and then you know if, if, if we are able to get the municipal uh, uh, mm -hmm. over time as well, mm -hmm. then that would also enhance that. Because basically we spent all of the extra funding uh, that we had, uh, except for the municipal right. policing money, we didn't uh, didn't use near all of it. Oh, okay. Uh, just because we ran out of policemen. Okay. <laughs> uh, and ran out of time. <laughs> right. Um, so those funds will be there. The only concern, of course, is we only have six constables, right. you know, myself and the corporal. So it's just a matter of, you know, the, the amount of policemen that we yeah. have. Um, but the overtime, we can bring other policemen in if they're available. Sure, sure. But summer's tough. You know, okay, summer, well, everybody's busy. Let's just make sure we've got everything we want in, done in May and June. Mm -hmm. So that then uh, it's, it, it is set. So, Yeah, th th that's the one 
the other benefit with being a standalone detachment is we can plan things. Right. Because it's all in our control. It's sure. in our bubble. Sure. And we can plan things ahead and we can make things happen uh, because it's us. We're okay. not getting yeah. Yanked, yeah. yanked all over the place. Well, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. It sounds uh, kind of neat. Yeah. So, you know, I'm hoping we'll be more responsive to the community needs just like we were this mm -hmm. summer. Um, but it'll be all the time. Great. Great. At the end of the day. So, and that's all I have. Okay. Council, any questions? any questions, comments? And ah, I think that's a that's a again refreshing where we're going with the with the standalone uh, offices. Mm -hmm. yeah, should be good. Okay, okay. Thank thanks, you. Sergeant Schur. Sure. Nice okay. update. Uh, next uh, on the list would be some water matters, uh, some water accounts, a water account in the amount of $62,395.86 for approval. Councillor Marrera Lorango, any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thanks a lot. Moving into correspondence, um, a request from, for support from the Penticton Regional Hospital patient care facility what are council's wishes please just to receive or hopefully we're going to uh, send a letter of support councillor Ryan yes uh, thank you mr. mayor yes I think we should send a letter of support um, we know that it's been uh, it's been on the uh, on the list and uh, sort of up there near the top for a long time and uh, so I would I would propose that we uh, we do send a letter of support along the lines of this although maybe the last couple of Paragraphs have to be changed, right? And um, I, I guess we'll have to look at the, uh, the people to make sure we get the right, right. ministers. But uh, <laughs> yes, absolutely, I think we should. Okay, and I think so we moved. should too. Uh, I know that was recommended by by uh, Mayor Janice Perino from Summerland, and she chairs the the Regional District Hospital Committee. And uh, we sort of have taken the position that the gloves are off. Uh, we waited long enough. And I think as we're heading to UBCM, we can also also play this as one of our one of our cards when when you're talking to somebody or any of the any of the ministry folks or any of the social events. We can always uh, promote that that uh, Penticton Regional Hospital and that that whole the whole issue up there and the upgrade is uh, very very worthy of our full support. So. Councilor McCordoff. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I do know that uh, that all the service clubs in town have also received uh, this request, and as far as I know, they're all being very supportive. So I think we should definitely add our voice to this. And uh, I, I happen to be talking to uh, um, uh, Mr. Slater the other day, and it's on the top of his list too. He says so. Right. That's a good thing. Okay, and you were seconding that motion, is that Absolutely. right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any other discussion from council on sending a, a letter? All in favor, opposed, carried. Uh, another letter coming out, uh, request for support for a private member's motion, uh, setting standards for uh, 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 rural septic systems. What is council's position on this one, please? Councilor Ryan. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, I, I think Rural septic systems and uh, and upgrading them or making sure that they are uh, uh, they are connected to a sanitation system if possible is is near to our hearts, and uh, I see this as a, one of the rookie MPs and uh, obviously she's uh, taking her job very seriously. So I would I would propose that we support uh, this motion M four hundred, and um, I guess the people that we should write to uh, since it does require. Uh, some money is uh, the Minister of Finance and the Prime Minister uh, with a copy to our our own MP. Okay, thank you. And a seconder on that, please, Councillor Rhodes. Any further discussion on that? I, I, again, I think it's very worthy. We, you know, when you look at the where we did the Northwest Sewer Project and some of our some of our initiatives here, uh, very worthwhile to protect, particularly uh, you know, water and drinking waters and like that. Mr. Romanko, please. Uh, thank you, Mary Wells. Uh, just uh, speaking to this, uh, one of the things that council may want to consider is an additional paragraph. In, in this particular request, the focus seems to be to pr providing grant funds to uh, individuals to improve their septic system. But uh, at the same time, in, in our neighborhood here, uh, you know, we have many septic fields that are just on our border, mm -hmm. and and having uh, funding available to uh, uh, take those septic systems and put them into a municipal system, mm -hmm. I think, is another attribute that uh, uh, Council may want to consider in this situation. Okay, I, I think we should do that. Uh, that sounds like a great idea. 
Any further, uh, Council Ryan? Uh, I would agree with that. And I'm just going to say that, uh, you know, it is, there, there are many programs like the residential rehabilitation programs and so on where homeowners can, uh, can uh, you know, can upgrade their, their insulation or their uh, adaptability for, uh, for disability. And I think, you know, uh, this is a, in that same category mm -hmm. of help. And I, but I agree with Mr. Romenko. I think that would be an additional uh, consideration okay. as well. Okay. Uh, all in favor of signing this letter? Great. Opposed? That has carried. Thank you. Uh, correspondence three. The Asuya Secondary School uh, looking for some, uh, just the receipt of that. Is that what we're looking at on that, please? Yeah, it just looks yes, like just a thank you. So. Yeah. 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 Just a thank you. Just a, just a thank you for that, uh, for the ovens. Thank you. Uh, motion to receive, Councillor Rhodes McCordoff. All in favor? Go carried. Thank you. Um, the the the, addition, the under correspondence four. It's the letter I talked about. I think I basically gave my preamble when I was introducing the the item. Um, the IJC holds uh, meetings in Oroville and Asuyas, and they alternate year to year on the operating orders for Suyas Lake. Um, and um, <clears throat> the last three years for sure, we have been away at our UBCM conference, which is basically a set date of the last week in September. Uh, so all of council has been away and we've always missed them. And I know I was talking to uh, Anna Warwick Sears, the chair of the Okanagan Basin Water Board, and had this discussion with her and again, she, she went, oh, are you, and I, they've got to stop doing it, was sort of her, her reply. So uh, I'd like to uh, be, have, uh, have us send a letter to the IJC requesting uh, that they search and see if there is another alternative date the week before, the week after, when we could get this done so that there is council representation on such an important matter. So I would like a, a resolution to send that letter, Councillor Rhodes, uh, seconded McCordoff. Any discussion on that? All in favor, opposed, carried. We'll get that letter away, thank you. <clears throat> Moving into bylaws, uh, the first bylaw is the Permissive Tax Exemption Bylaw, 1293-2012, a report from Mr. Zackel. Thank you, Mayor Wells. Um, so before council is permissive tax exemption bylaw 1293. Um, the background on this is for council to renew their permissive tax exemption bylaw under section 224 of the community charter. Each year council updates their permissive tax exemption bylaw, which is to be adopted no later than October 31st of each year. This tax exemption bylaw would take effect for the 2013 tax year. Um, we've added two properties to this year's permissive tax exemption bylaw. The first one is Desert Park Exhibition Society for the portions that they are leasing up at Desert Park for the horse, horse um, people. The second property that we've added to our permissive tax exemption bylaw is the Osuyas Pyramid Corporation Limited and this is for the lands being leased um, by the town of Osuyas for boat trailer parking. So. You know, some of the implications that we got continuation of providing permissive tax exemptions by updating and renewing the permissive tax exemption bylaw. Um, for sustainability, this also allows for nonprofit organizations, places of public worship, um, to be able to continue to provide services to the community of OCS. So, the options before council is to give first three readings to permissive tax exemption bylaw 1293 or to further amend per permissive tax exemption bylaw 1293. Thank you. And Council's wishes on this, please. Councilor McCordoff. Thank you, Mayor Wells. I would uh, move that we um, uh, endorse option one to give first three readings to permissive tax exemption bylaw 1293, comma, 2012. Thank you. And that seconder, Councilor Rhodes. Uh, any discuss, uh, Councilor Ryan, please. Yes. I, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I had a um, question, really, and it's. Uh, relating to number 10, um, and that is the Destination of Serious Development Society. Uh, they operate out of the visitor center, and I, I'm just wondering, are we giving an exemption for the entire tax on that property or for their portion of that, uh, the upper floor there that they use? That's a good question. Um, basically, the visitor information center 
and the destination OSUIUS component are both tax exempt. There is one component in there that's a business component, and that's um, Greyhound, and they are taxed on their portion that they lease. So the only things that's being exempted is um, the market because destination OSUIUS for the marketing and the visitor information center. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, any other, any other questions? All in favor of the motion? Opposed, that is carried. Thanks, Mr. Zackel. Uh, bylaw number two, council procedure amendment bylaw, report from Director of Corporate Services, in this case, Mr. Romanko. Thank you, Mayor Wells. Uh, uh, council adopted the uh, council procedures bylaw number uh, 1271 in 2010, and it, it is in need of some minor amendments. Council gave uh, first three readings to, count to the amended uh, bylaw. Uh, number 1271.01 on September 4th, uh, 2012. Uh, this bylaw uh, makes some general housekeeping changes as well as a few clarifications uh, to the amendments of bylaw 1271. Uh, the bylaw is now in front of council for final adoption and uh, the options as presented by staff are to uh, the council uh, approve the uh, amended uh, bylaw that council uh, return it to staff for further review uh, or that it be abandoned. So uh, that's the options. Great. Uh, council please, Councillor Rhodes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'll uh, uh, move the council procedure bylaw amendment. Council procedure amendment bylaw number 1271-01-2012 be adopted. Thank you, and that seconder was Councillor Plant. Any discussion on that? All in favor, opposed, carried. That has been adopted. And I was opposed. To oh, you were opposed I to was it? I was voting opposed, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, moving into business. Uh, business one, electric, ve electric vehicle charging station grant. Uh, report from uh, planning technician, Mr. Phil Armstrong. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Oh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Um, on June 4th, 2012, Council directed the administration to apply for the grant for electric vehicle charging station, um, for electric vehicle charging stations and endeavor to develop a site at Gyro Park. As per the minutes of the meeting, staff also sent an email to the accommodators informing them of the grant opportunity. The town was successful in attaining the community charging infrastructure grant for electric vehicle charging stations incentives uh, administered by the Fraser Basin Council. The grant is for 8,000 uh, for two stations based on the maximum eligible grant of 4,000 per station. Uh, just a note on how they define a station, they define it as a cord set. So what we have here is a dual cord set. So in essence, it's two stations. Um, this report will discuss the selected charging station, the location, and the possibility of charging a fee for the service. So Tyler Underwood of UES Engineering and the planning technician selected the GridBot UP160J dual level station as the appropriate station. See the picture to the right of the report. Uh, some of the reasons for this is a dual head station is cheaper and takes up less space than, than single pedestal stations. It is basically the only model with credit card capability that has a dual head, which is um, optimal for locating between two parking stalls. There is no extra charge to customize the unit for corporate colors and logo. Uh, modular for easy upgrades, so this, they call this future proof. Um, it's, it has advanced network functionality for billing, marketing, and data charging, or data sharing. And data sharing is a requirement of the grant, um, and it's made in Canada. Uh, note that a level two station can recharge a car to full in five to six hours through battery, uh, though battery packs rarely require that much of a charge. For, so for the location, uh, the new gyro park parking lot has been roughed in with five different locations for charging stations. The location below has been selected because it is visible, it can accommodate a dual head station, and it will not, be, it will not block uh, the area we need if, if we need to bring in a washroom trailer for a special event. Um, charging a fee. Gridbot units currently have the capability to take credit card payments over the phone, similar to Vancouver's parking meter payment system. And free of charge in 2013, an updated module will be sent to the town that allows for direct card swiping. 
um, the town must pay a $30 network fee to collect data that gets submitted to the Fraser Basin Council. But incorporated into this network fee is the ability to, to collect a charging fee. An additional bonus is that Gridbot absorbs a credit card fee and, it, and thereby all the revenue would then get deposited into the town's bank account. According to the Fraser Basin Council, many, municip many municipalities are not charging a fee for the service, at least for the first year, to promote reducing greenhouse gases. On the other hand, the City of Vancouver has a charging fee which is cheaper than the fee to park a gas vehicle in one of their lots. The province of Quebec has a flat fee of $2.50 uh, $2 for per charging session. Uh, some other reasons for, for charging stations is that uh, it helps cover some, it'll help cover some of the capital costs, uh, depreciation or re replacement of uh, or future units. And uh, yeah, so some of the options are to charge a fee, option one, charge a $2.50 uh, fee uh, at all times. Uh, keep the lot free during the day, but charge a fee at night when longer charges may occur and Watermark's guests may use uh, may want to use the station throughout the night. Uh, three, provide electric charging stations as a green promotional service, but review charging a fee during uh, the 2015 budgetary discussions. Uh, implications. A new service available to the community and traveling public. The grant fund has been uh, designed to fund 570 stations throughout the province of BC. Being an early installer of an electric vehicle station, We'll put a series on public charging online maps and smartphone apps, providing a new way to attract the traveling public, which may have uh, green economic spin-offs. Organizational staff time to regularly check the, the cord to see if it's damaged. Uh, budget installing the dual electric station is budgeted at 13,000. Uh, 8,000 of this is covered by the grant. Um, and this, this budget includes the station, minor electrical work, electrical engineering fees and signage required as a condition of the grant. Um, then ongoing costs should be minimal, only $30 network fee, and this could be recovered by uh, collecting a charging fee. Sustainability of this project uh, supports the objectives of the community, climate action plan to reduce greenhouse gases and improves environmental sustainability. So the recommendation is that council receives for information and resolves as per option one to charge a fee of $2.50 a charging station. Uh, a, a charging session, pardon me. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Armstrong. Uh, Council, Councillor Rhodes, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I'd like to uh, uh, maybe step aside from the staff recommendation and go with option number three. And that's, uh, I'd like to move to provide the electrical charging station as a green promotional service, but review charging a fee during the 2015 budgetary discussions. So that would be, uh, okay, that's two plus years of no, of no charging for those. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And we're in there for $5,000 of resort municipality money, Mr. Romanko? That's what's been identified in the budget, yes. Okay, okay. Council's wishes, please, further to to Councillor Rhodes, any further, dis are we looking at her a seconder then? Uh, Councillor McCordoff, any further discussion? Councillor Ryan. Yes, I would, uh, I would speak uh, opposed to this motion, Mr. Mayor. Um, first of all, I, I, I think it's a terrific thing that we've got it. Uh, if I could fill up my car for 250, boy, <laughs> I would be, I feel like I've gone to heaven. Uh, you know, we don't give away free gas and I, I think, uh, we, we, uh, we have the capability here. Uh, it's made in Canada. It can take uh, credit cards. I, I think we already have uh, parking that's free throughout our community. I see no reason to, uh, to not charge. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other discussions? Council McCordoff. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, my feeling was in supporting the motion was that uh, what a good idea to try and encourage people to come and to use it. Um, and, and when I realized that the, the, uh, the machine itself had the capability of taking a, a credit card, it would certainly be very easy for us to add that, um, that option pretty quickly. Um, I'm, I, I, I still think it might be on a trial basis. I, I don't know whether two years is right, but I think on a trial basis we should offer it for free. So I'm okay with that. 
Okay, and I, okay, uh, Councilor Rose, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I too am uh, very, very excited about this program. Uh, I know in the, the planning of that parking lot area down there, there was uh, a fair amount of discussion about putting the infrastructure, the underground wiring in for this. Um, so the, you know, a good portion of this of the cost of putting that in there came to us through a grant program, and we're going to uh, pay for the remainder of it through our resort municipality funding. And you know, I think it's important, you know, being a resort municipality like we are, to make strong statements about our interest in in many things. Uh, uh, not to say the least, uh, our environment. And I think this is an excellent opportunity to provide a service in our community that is not going to cost us very much. I think the overall revenue that we would garner from charging a fee uh, certainly is not going to be that much. I, I don't see it being, you know, maybe a few hundred dollars tops. I, you know, I know it's dependent on the usage of it and that kind of thing. But I think it's a strong, strong statement that we're making to the visitors and, and residents in our community that we are uh, a municipality that's interested in doing the right thing when it comes to this kind of thing. And I would suggest that um, you know our boat trailer parking lot is a is a you know a very very good comparison to to this type of thing. Uh, it certainly costs us money, but it's a strong statement as being a resort municipality that we. You know, we really are interested in doing this, and you know, we don't charge uh, any fee at all for our boat trailer parking down there. And just look at the benefit in our community and the miles and miles of parking that we provide by doing that down there. This is something very, very, very similar. I think over the next two years that uh, these rechargeable uh, vehicles are going to become more common. And I think in 2015, that would be an excellent opportunity to review the process gather up the statistics and look at charging at that time. I'm going to wade in here. <laughs> I get a turn. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm sort of bagging Councillor Ryan's position uh, of pay, uh, particularly if they get to card swipe. I understand the promotional com uh, uh, component of opening this up, but if we get to card swipe and it's the same as we're not buying fuel for folks and and um, uh, card swipe is pretty easy. If you read that, if you have to start doing a phone, not everyone has a cell phone that's charged that works. And I hate places where you, you have to put coins in. I mean, you get to a parking lot and it's dark and you're trying to read the instructions on how to, you don't even know where to put the money most of it, or I don't anyway, sorry. So. It doesn't take your news. <laughs> <Or it doesn't, laughs> yeah, there's a sign saying it doesn't take, doesn't take uh, loonies. loonies. So then you're going, oh, wonderful. And that's all you've got. So I, I could certainly see relaxing it until the upgrade comes. Um, uh, so that's sort of where my position is. <laughs> Councillor Bond. Um, I just wanted to ask the question, what was the session period? Like, can we determine what that session period is for a charge, or how does it work? Like you, like you say, a five, six hour period, um, can I pull up there and plug it in, we're done for five, six hours, I can walk away? Or what's the sessions, what were we thinking of the session part? Yeah, once the, once the car is charged, um, the draw on electricity would be... It would probably stop drawing electricity, right? There's other ways of charging, such as per kilowatt, and uh, there's a few different ways you can set the station up. But setting a flat fee seemed to be the easiest way of doing it. And so, for 250, what's my session? Depends on on how f empty your battery is, but uh, okay. wouldn't be longer than five hours. So no, I do see uh, I see both sides of this. Is we we get mm -hmm. a chance to um, um, to show our, our how we're becoming a green environment and, and green community. Um, on the other thing is I, I would hate to be eventually, hopefully there's a lineup for these two things, but I have a guy that's parked there all day charging for six hours uh, waiting for my time. That's where, ta that's where the dollar starts coming in. It almost works almost like a meter in a sense is uh, put in my meter's time and uh, it's time for me to move on and let the next person charge. <coughs> However, I don't know if we'll be at that in the first year, so I, I, I also get that, the part of uh, allowing to see where, where it leads to. Uh, uh, 
<laughs> Councilman Picardo. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It just occurred to me that if you decide uh, you're going to stay at Watermark, for instance, and you're going to plug <clears> in your car at 6 o'clock at night, you're probably not going to get out to check it again till 9 the next morning, which is not quite fair. So I, uh, I'm wondering how, uh, as Councilor Plant said, how we deal with this. Uh, you know, if it's, if it's done after four hours at 10 o'clock, Surely it's incumbent on the person who's got it there to then move it, but they may not. They may think, well, this will just work fine all night, but that <laughs> prevents somebody else from doing it. So it's a, it's going to be tricky. We're going to have to keep our, keep watching on this, right? See what happens. <laughs> okay. uh, Mr. Romango, <laughs> I just want to say I really, I'm, it's really a pleasure that we have uh, strong opinions on easy <laughs> items. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Romango. Yes, just in terms of operations, uh, we may have to, within our parking uh, bylaw, set a, a, a limit yeah. in terms of time. Again, it becomes an enforcement issue, but uh, that, that's, that's probably one strategy we can use. Uh, the second being, my sense is that uh, kind of the human side will take over sometimes on the positive and, and there'll be a recognition that uh, maybe somebody else wants to get their tank filled up and uh, people will be self-policing in that particular way. That's what I would hope. but. Uh, to, to get over that uh, that particular issue, we would probably could do a, a parking bylaw amendment to uh, limit limit the, the parking to five hours or six hours or whatever. Councillor <laughs> Ryan Rhodes. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you. Um, the last time I looked, um, all the grants and all the um, re resort municipality things come from people, and there's only one taxpayer. And, uh, and I think it's, it's, it would be a sign that we are using our grants um, with great stewardship if we actually tried to recoup some of the costs <laughs> that is being put into it. So, uh, you know, uh, we give a lot of things away in this province and, and I, uh, and in this town, I should say. And I, I know when we first talked about the boat trailer, as, 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 as good an idea as it was, uh, I said, will we charge at some point in time? And we, we've had it for three years and we still haven't. And I still believe that, you know, uh, it, it cost us, it cost us money to do it. We've now relieved ourselves of, of paying the tax through the, the uh, person who owns it. But, uh, you know, these things cost. And, and this, is, this, is, this is not a Santa Claus thing. It's not gonna go on forever. <laughs> okay, thanks, Councillor Ryan. <laughs> Councillor Rhodes, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So many of these amenities that we provide, like our boat trailer parking lot and the proposal that I'm making in this, uh, are the reason why we are what we are. Um, I don't view these as being uh, negative things. I think they're things that uh, draw people to our community and retain people in our community because we do provide them. And I think that's the overall essence of our resort municipality funding that we receive every year. Um, in addition, uh, uh, the electric cars, when they draw power to charge, once they've reached that level, there is no further draw on it. So if there's one hour of draw required to charge that battery up, it stops at that point. Every one of them have the technology. Um, I believe the Watermark either has or, or is part of their planning uh, to put these stations in there. I talked to Glenn Harris a little while ago about it, and he had planned on putting them in there didn't know whether they had them in their parking lot or not. And just a reminder that we also have, you know, pre-planned for four other stations very, very similar to this, that this is only one of five proposals. Okay. If this thing works, then we can expand it and look at a source of revenue from it. All as I'm saying is that the, the motion that I've made based on option number three is a temporary thing. It's time that's going to go by. It'll give us a little bit of experience with it. And it just at the end of the day is not going to cost us that much. And I don't think we're setting a precedent for future revenue uh, sources from there at all. Okay, uh, we're going to call the question. Uh, without any further debate, everyone had a fair kick at it. All in favor of the, of the motion? Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs>
Councillor Ryan. I, I had a question. I was so caught up in this, uh, this uh, parliamentary debate that I <laughs> didn't have a chance to ask my question, but if I may. Yes. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm delighted that um, staff did ask the uh, accommodators uh, about the grant and told them that it was available. I wonder if we had any response to that. Uh, so far, we haven't heard back, uh, and um, I bolded the deadline of September 28th, so uh, if they're listening, tick-tock. <laughs> and I, I offered if, if they had any questions, they could give me a call as well, so. Okay, I guess, I guess that's, that's a, it's a great segue for a, a little announcement I have. Um, VIA 97 is meeting on Friday at the Sonora Center. And uh, they're, they're bringing up uh, the whole electric vehicle concept again. And uh, I'm sorry, I, I apologize that I don't have his name other than it's that Spanish hyphenated name who presented uh, over at one of the conferences at Spirit Ridge. So he's coming up and three state representatives from Washington State are coming. And this VIA 97 is a collaborative approach to Highway 97. Uh, trade, commerce, and, and promotions. And they're coming up, and this is actually, I'm sorry, it, it's not a conference, it's a, it's a business meeting for people that are there. But certainly, if people were interested, Keith, I would expect to see the press there, um, and, and D.O., it would be great, Cheryl, if they were there. Council has been invited. Phil, uh, it's 10 o'clock. Uh, I'm sure you can get a couple hours off to go over and, and, and take, take this in. So maybe at that point, we'll have a whole lot more information because they're actually talking about, they're, they're working on one from Seattle to Wenatchee over the pass, um, and this would be at that, you know, we have 110 uh, powers, and then we have 220. Are these 220 powers? Uh, no. In order to put the uh, level three charging stations in, we would have had to upgrade the transformers down there. Okay. And the stations cost uh, 10 times as much. Right. So, yeah. so the the Washington State uh, proposal is, uh, and they're I believe moving ahead on this. Again, I'll know a lot more on Friday. Um, but as as they're moving ahead on this, they want to put in uh, the equivalent of three phase. So it would be you would do a full uh, for a full electric vehicle, not a hybrid or anything. A full electric vehicle, you could charge in an hour. And it's you know at 440 volts and electrical things that I'm not all that familiar with, but but way up there in power use and consumption and that. So so really looking at at uh, a practicality of electric vehicles on highways, which which we haven't seen yet. Uh, maybe you know that's into the future. So there is some information and uh, there will be some people around here on on Friday at this Via 97. So. We'll try to get some council members there. I know they're going and get Phil and people like that. And, and if you would like to attend, uh, we can sure get someone from DO there too. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Armstrong. But you're also up on the next item, I believe. Yes. Uh, this is a development permit uh, 1201 for Pentagraph land surveying. And uh, Mr. Pentagraph is here with us today. Um, the attached. Uh, permit um, is for the uh, has been prepared for council's consideration mr. bad Pentagraph would like to upgrade the facade of his building which will improve the building from uh, buildings form and character and make it better suited to the scale of the neighboring buildings uh, some key features of the facade upgrade include a parapet roof which is characteristic of dry climate architecture an awning which will create shade on the south facing windows in the afternoon there by reducing energy consumption. Uh, Mr. Pentagraph is also putting in eight inch uh, walls, which will allow for a lot more insulation on the south facing, the south facing wall. Uh, signage that is, is externally lit with downcast lighting. Uh, the implications for the community is an enhanced main street, organizational promoting the town's style of dry climate architecture. Uh, budget was the uh, fee for the permit and sustainability. It's consistent with the community climate action plan by adding an awning and more insulation that will make a contribution to reducing greenhouse gas consumption. So the options are that council approves development permit number 1201 subject to the terms and conditions. And uh, or option two is council does not approve the permit and uh, staff recommends option one. Thanks, thanks Mr. Armstrong. Uh, Councillor Font. 
Uh, I would motion that uh, we, we adopt the council approves uh, the development permit number 12-01 subject to terms and conditions. Thank you. And that seconder was Councillor Ryan. Uh, any further discussion on it? Uh, great, great step forward on it. It's, it's uh, really, really going to be nice. I was, I was sort of looking at the, uh, at the building the other day. Well, first off, I saw the sign, uh, the development sign over, the development permit signage over there, and I went and looked, and I thought, yeah, that's, that's been there for, for quite a while. So, yeah, uh, a, a new, uh, fresh approach to it will be wonderful. Any further comments? Hearing none. All in favor? Uh, the building will be uh, developed and upgraded. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, under business, that's that. Uh, any notice of motion coming forward? Seeing none. Uh, reports, it's uh, some bill paying time. General Sunbowl cash requirements. Uh, the general account, $367,746.65. Sun Bowl in the amount of $4,424.17 and payroll accounts in the amount of $82,440.08. Uh, is there any discussion on any of those amounts? They will uh, be approved by consensus and the payroll counts are re received by consensus. Uh, the building permit report for the month of August 2012. Uh, just. Uh, Three smaller $10,000 items total for the month, 30000 total to date for to, uh, 2012, $3,625,210. Uh, total to date 2011 was $2,007,000, so we're up about uh, $900,000 from 2011. Uh, motion to receive, please. Councillor Rhodes Ryan, all in favor? That has been received. Mm -hmm. Uh, going into committee reports, um, Councillor Plant, were you going to make your committee? I'd like you to talk about the splash park and the addition to our office, or to, the, to here and to the wall. Do you did you want to do that as part of your committee, as part of your councillor report? Yeah, I'll probably do it during the councillor report. Okay, yeah, let's do it then. You're the first one up, anyway. So, okay, okay. <laughs> okay um, so then we'll go to the CAO report, Mr. Romanko. Thank you, Mayor Wells. Just a few of the activities that uh, the administration has been uh, involved in over the last uh, couple of weeks, uh, starting in the community services area, where uh, we're happy to report that the flood damage repairs have been completed. Uh, this weekend, we had our, our floors waxed and everything seems to be back, uh, back on track and back to normal. So we've, we've seen some real, enha real enhancement to the building uh, based on the flood uh, damage. The uh, regional district uh, has approved another $15,000 for the arena humidifier and uh, staff is in the process of uh, preparing the tender documents to post on BC bid. Uh, the mass uh, program registration went very well. They had uh, 22 organizations set up in the gymnasium and they sold more than 90 annual passes uh, during the week. So uh, people are uh, getting all geared up for, uh, for the fitness uh, uh, opportunities. Uh, organized the uh, Terry Fox run that saw approximately 20 participants and they're working on the final arena schedules. Uh, corporate services, while our hours have been scaled back but continue to uh, work on the unsightly property files that uh, seem to be ca have been carried over uh, from the summer. In finance, uh, you dealt with the permissive tax bylaw exemption by permissive tax exemption bylaw today and also we're happy to report that there are no tax sales required as all properties on the list have been paid up. Planning and development uh, worked with uh, the consultant to uh, on a design of the public consultation on, on a waterfront uh, project. Uh, design charrette will be held uh, on uh, October 11 and 12 for invited guests uh, but the general public uh, will be invited to an what they call an open cafe uh, to receive input, so there'll be some information coming to council uh, on that in the near future. <coughs> and also, they're moving ahead on landscaping of the area in and around the marina, so we should see a number of changes there in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Public Works is happy to report that the Spartan Drive Phase 2 is approximately 50% completed, and that the washrooms at the Gyro and the Goodman Park are open for public use, and we've been getting uh, quite good feedback on that. In terms of the CAO, uh, 
we're going to be having a conference call with the resort municipalities to review a new policy for a room count process. Uh, apparently the uh, po uh, province seems to have listened to uh, uh, actually this council's request to Minister Bell, although we haven't received the letter back from Minister Bell. Uh, but uh, council uh, asked the minister to take a look at why the accommodation guide was used and not the actual numbers and it appears that the new policy will reflect this particular uh, oh, process. Wow. So uh, I haven't crunched the numbers, but uh, it, it probably could mean over an extra $100,000 to wow. us a year in resort municipality funding. I don't know if it'll come this year, but uh, probably in, in the next year should the program continue. Uh, received the response from the Suez uh, cottages that they will not be requiring the service to to receive their sewer, uh, they'll be proceeding with the construction of their own sewer plant. And uh, the uh, I've responded uh, to a few public inquiries on uh, providing more information on the, the reclaimed irrigation water project that uh, we're doing down at the desert park facilities. And uh, all directors and the CEO are working on business planning and budget for, me for next year. So that's uh, my report for today. Thank you, Mr. Romanko. Well, that's great, great news. Uh, we won't count our won't count our chickens just yet. But if we, uh, that's been a long, long going issue with uh, how they counted the uh, the resort rooms in the community. So if 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 we get that one, if they if they listen to some of our pleas and and cries over the years and our latest letters and that, if they listen to that and we and uh, they change it, wow, that's. That's that's really good news. That's that's wonderful for for the community. Uh, leading to councillor reports, um, and first one up, councillor Plant. Yes, thank you, Mayor Wells. Yeah, I did want to bring up the beautiful signs that were that we have here displayed behind Mayor uh, Stu Wells um, today at our uh, committee of the whole meeting. Uh, we presented the feasibility study for the Splash Park and we're very excited about uh, the momentum that we've we've gathered and where we're going from here. Uh, so we had some special guests here today from the from our committee. Um, I want to say thank you to uh, Brody McLean and Matthew Hansen uh, for for actually sitting through about an hour. They did a great <laughs> job. And uh, Brody and his friends at the daycare created this uh, beautiful Splash Park Please sign that we see here. And if you can't see it, it has it actually signed by all the kids who are at the daycare. So they're very excited for us uh, to move forward on this project. As we moved into the into the last weekend, this brings in our celebrity uh, our celebrity weekend, our Soy Celebrates weekend, and uh, I had the pleasure of going to uh, one of our Splash Park fundraisers with Rotary and Destination of Soy's, which was the lobster dinner on the Saturday night. Uh, it was a great event, sold out event. Uh, I really couldn't ask for a better time and see the support of the community that came out. Um, this project is going to go through with flying colors and it's going to happen because of the community involvement and support that we have. Uh, I just, it, the amount of people that came up to me just re ready to put the shovel in the ground, uh, in-kind work, contributions, uh, the fundraising, I, again I'd like to thank Rotary and, and uh, uh, for all their efforts that they put into some of the fundraising as we continue into the fall. We have uh, the harvest dinner coming up in November. Uh, just so many different activities related to the Splash Park, related to community involvement. Uh, makes me makes me very excited and uh, pleased to be on that committee and seeing the momentum as we move forward in that project. The other thing that I wanted to bring up um, actually is the Red Apple grand opening that we went to on September 14th. Um, when uh, it's over where the old fields uh, just across from the Super 8. Uh, actually, when the fields closed down, I was I was somewhat concerned about what was going to happen to that spot. Um, I frequently did go there and use that facility and 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 uh, bought things there. So it's great to see Red Apple come in there. And uh, if you haven't been in there, Sue has been taken over in the uh, candy. She likes the candy section. That's <laughs> Councillor McCordoff. So um, please check that out when you go there. Um, but they've done a great job. We had a chance to meet the district uh, manager for Red Apple and the staff is fantastic. So I look forward to everyone getting out there and thanks to them and to that grand opening. 
As far as on the future list here, we have uh, UBCM coming up uh, next week, so I'm, I'm very excited to, to go to my first one. Uh, excited for the networking, uh, to talk to municipalities of our size, of all different types of um, different things that are happening that are exciting, you know, some of the show, some of the excitement, um, talk about some of the exciting projects that we have and continue to find ways to continue uh, um, getting support in areas that maybe we, we are looking at improving on and uh, I look forward to that. And I think that's where I'm going to leave it. Thank you, Mayor Wells. Great. Thanks, Councillor Plant. Uh, good, good report. And yeah, the 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 kiddies that were here today that was that was pretty special having them in council. And uh, they were just excellent, uh, excellent representatives of uh, probably three and four years old, maybe four and five. I better not insult them. Uh, <laughs> but they did a, they did a great job of uh, bringing forth uh, their wants for the for the splash park. So, uh, Councillor Ryan, please. Um. I'm, I'm actually last, but I'll go whenever you say. Okay. Well, I, I called it now. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Well, um, yes, I, I'll just say a word about the Red Cross Depot. You, uh, we haven't received yet a formal uh, reply to our letter from Council by the uh, manager, the regional manager of uh, Red Cross, but uh, through the Associated Times, you heard uh, what, uh, what the manager had to say to the editor. Uh, the Volunteers, uh, our key volunteer, our recruiter, has uh, is, uh, is away, and and we haven't been able to contact the volunteers. But uh, Councillor McCordoff and I are planning to have a meeting with them in the near future to uh, assess uh, where they want to go with this and to uh, support them in whatever way. So something will happen, but uh, we're not at this point sure what it will what it will be. I uh, joined uh, t two of my colleagues at the uh, Red, uh, Red Apple opening. And the thing that really struck me was not only that we have, we continue to have a general merchandise store in town, but th there are nine jobs there that have been retained in the community, and I think that's really, really important. Obviously, uh, I, I uh, enjoyed it as well uh, as Councillor Plant, the uh, lobster on the beach, and, and it was really, it was again a, a wonderful community event, nice outdoor events, it was a beautiful evening, and uh, a good cause and um, delicious, uh, delicious lobster as well. And uh, was able to participate with others in the uh, Terry Fox Run, and uh, I think that's, uh, we had a great day for that, and it was well organized, and I, I, I thought that we had a few more people than last year, so I hope that will continue to grow. So um, again, UBCM is coming up next week, and uh, we'll probably have lots to tell you uh, when we return from there. Thanks, Councillor Ryan. Uh, Councilor Rhodes, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I'm going to defer again this week. I've uh, been kind of busy uh, personally in, in my job and haven't had much time to uh, come up with a report. But uh, there's lots of stuff in between my, my my ears and my little brain will get working again right away. So thank uh, you. That's, that's always scary when you start storing them up like that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure we'll get the download. <laughs> Thanks, Councillor Rhodes. Councillor McCordoff, please. Yes, thank you, uh, Mayor Wells. I won't repeat uh, a lot of the things that have already been mentioned, but uh, uh, just it, it, when I started to look at the number of things that, um, the number of meetings and so on that have been at in the last week or, or 10 days, there's quite a few. It adds up. So one of them that I'd like to, to mention was that uh, a week ago today we had uh, um, uh, Senator uh, Nancy Green Rain in here presenting an award to Ruth Schiller, the Diamond uh, Jubilee Award, which was just it. It was amazing. And there was probably 25 people in here, and when uh, Mrs. Schiller got up to accept this, she talked to every single person in here and mentioned their names, and we were all <laughs> with our mouths open because she did an excellent job. So congratulations to to uh, to Ruth Schiller, and um, uh, Nancy Green is from is from Rossland and went to school with my husband and with Jerry Elbel. So Jerry Elbel was down here for a few minutes as well. Uh, another meeting I went to last week was the uh, Children and Youth uh, Committee. It was in Oliver, and I was quite amazed at the number of agencies that deal with uh, children and youth in the community. And I was um, I was very pleased to uh, to be there. That was my first meeting there. The next one will be in Asuyas in December. 
Um, I was uh, also at the Red Apple store, and uh, and what I what I liked particularly about it is that it's a Canadian company, and uh, that was very nice, and that there were nine people, local people, that were hired to be there. So I think it will be a success. And yes, the candy aisle is fantastic. So you need to go in there. Um, this Saturday, uh, outside here, we had our final market on Main um, for the season. Uh, there were nine vendors here, which was pretty amazing considering the Rock Creek Fall Fair was on. Um, there, I know that there are some um, people that, uh, uh, farmers that have uh, fruit and vegetables still for sale. I'm, I'm sure you would be able to, uh, to get um, some supplies from them if you needed it. Uh, they may even be down here next week, I'm not sure. But officially our year has ended and it was an amazing um, uh, market on Maine this year, the best ever. I think we had 45 or 46 vendors on a couple of, uh, of days. So we thank the people, um, the local people and the, and the tourists for coming out and shopping local. Um, we think that's just great. Um, the lobster feed on Saturday night was uh, like those were a bunch of people that were just like Energizer bunnies down there. The rotary and uh, helpers, um, they did an amazing job. Fortunately, it was a lovely night and it was, uh, was nice and warm. It was a great, a great crowd and for a great cause, so that's, that's terrific. Uh, Councillor Ryan and I were also at a meeting last week um, at, on the health and safety update and it was just uh, an information meeting but it's always nice to get an update on those. And I did, I, I won't say I went on the Terry Fox run, I went on a Terry Fox walk and I, I didn't do uh, quite as far as uh, Councillor Ryan but I, I did go for uh, a half an hour or so and it was a beautiful day. So um, I'm also looking forward to my first UBCM next week. So we'll have more on that later. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor McCordoff. Uh, very, very busy uh, couple of weeks, obviously. Uh, lots of meetings and lots of inputs. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks for doing a good, good job for uh, representing Council there. Uh, I've just I've got a couple of, uh, couple of items I'd like to mention. Um, I did attend the uh, National Aboriginal Business Conference over at Spirit Ridge. That was a two-day conference, uh, two-and-a-half-day conference. I did a welcoming address there, greetings from the town. Uh, I really enjoyed doing it over at uh, Spirit Ridge on, on First Nations uh, traditional land. Um, what, a, what a neat conference they had. They had, um, I believe, in the room that holds 200 and 280 people, they, they had 320 people registered for the conference. Um, and they, they're coming from all across Canada, uh, and uh, they're... Boy, oh boy, First Nations on the move everywhere. They're, they're, they're really getting, getting the program um, and coming out for, for further ideas and, and coaching and mentoring and that. It was, uh, it was really, really a, a neat conference with, with some great speakers. Uh, I am going to travel a bit of a uh, previously traveled road about this last weekend. And uh, I, uh, I don't think I've ever been so romanced by Osuyas, <laughs> ever. <coughs> It started out, I went to the, uh, the red carpet soiree on, uh, on Friday evening. It was just spectacular. It, was out, it started off outside in a courtyard and everybody moving into the, uh, to the convention center. Um, the TV folks were there. Uh, Sophie, Sophie Louie was, was the, was the guest, guest speaker host for the evening. Uh, Sophie Louie from Global TV, of course. And, uh, and, and she, had, she had some helpers with her. There was media there from like a, a, a group of, uh, of three, three ladies from the Vancouver Sun. So there was a lot of media folks that were there. And it was just a, a, a real fine event went in. And there was um, local restaurants that were, that were doing the food. Um, and so, you know, you, we had Greek food, we had East Indian food, we had food from all over, from all over town. And it was just wonderfully presented. Uh, of course, uh, wine, wines from, from all over the winery area here, all over in Asuyas. It, uh, it was a bit of a joint venture in, in that regard. It was just, uh, they had a, a three-piece three -piece band, but they put out a, they, they all came out of a 12-piece band, so they put out a big band sound. It was just such a special evening. And when I looked around, I would say 
Uh, maybe 40% were local and the rest were tourists. And or, or, tourists or visitors or had come for the event. And to see how excited they were about Asuyas and the atmosphere and how they felt about Asuyas was just so special. And then of course on the Saturday night was, uh, was, the, lobster, was the lobster fest put on by Rotary. And I really want to mention the Rotarians here. It's always great when, when we see one of our service clubs out there uh, working very hard to, to make this successful. Um, on, the, on the Sunday, there was a, a, a wine savoring brunch, a champagne savoring brunch, savoring brunch on the roof of the Spirit, Spirit Ridge. And it was just absolutely gorgeous. Um, and they had, a, they had a fellow come in and take the champagne and do the savoring. And um, I've, I've seen it done before with a, with a sword or the big knife or whatever. And he actually took um, a, a plastic glass uh, with a little base on it, you know, like a little round champagne glass. And he did it with the glass. And the, and the, the neck went pop and the, the cork went shooting, shooting down the, over, the, over the side of the building. Um, it was pretty impressive. And again, I looked, I, I, I sat with a couple of, uh, of local people that were there, uh, Martha and I, and I would say 80% uh, were visitors. And they were just thrilled to be in Asuyas, to be a part of it. Uh, I heard people talking about real estate. I heard people talking about buying properties and things like that. So it was, it was so great. And I'd like to mention that uh, Sophie Louie, uh, when she was up there um, doing, doing her talks, um, she could pronounce Osuyas. How great was that? I didn't hear one soy in the whole <laughs> weekend. So I think the word is getting out. Uh, if you're going to go to Osuyas, you better learn how to pronounce it before you get there because you will get corrected. So uh, what I'd like to, what I want to say is thank you because there was Destination Osuyas folks and Rotarians and, and people just helping out. There were some contractors there. Local contractors, uh, some of these events were, were uh, um, organized by Parezo Events. Uh, that's a local company, a uh, local husband-wife company, and, and they're doing this kind of work. Uh, I was talking to her, and, and, uh, uh, and she had done 36 weddings this year. She's a wedding organizer, and she'd done 36 and is probably going to do 136 next year. So it's really, really great to see a whole different shift in economy grow in our town, and these people are coming here because they enjoy it, and it's that special a place. So um, I, think, I think that's the end of my report. <laughs> so thank, thank you very much. Uh, we're looking for a motion to adjourn. Uh, uh, Ryan Plant, all in favor, we're adjourned. Have a great 30-degree sunny afternoon, folks. Good afternoon.